That took way longer than expected, but oh, they're done. They're done, and I'm happy with them, and they have a fully threaded tip, which is something that I knew would be a bear to do, but they're perfect. They're very, 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 very good. As perfect as I can make them right now. These are the best pens I've made to date. I mean, that's always going to be the answer because I'm always getting better. But I'm happy with them. They're all machined. They're all anodized. Packaging is all figured out. I'm going to take some photos, put them online. Um, the subscribers to the people, the people that are interested in buying these would have gotten an email already stating when they'll be for sale. Uh, Friday, 8 a.m. MST. Uh, if you're watching this and they're still available, great. I unfortunately don't think so. I think they'll go pretty quick. But yeah, I'm a... Uh, very, very happy with them. So in this video, we're gonna take one apart, or more or so, put it together, um, show you how the little intricate, intricate workings work, and we'll take it from there. So all the components of the pen, that's a tube, stainless steel. I'm not gonna use that one, but I uh, use all the titanium parts, which for this pen, I anodized blue. It's the thumb stud with the, or pff, thumb stud, end cap with the um, magnet, the bolt slider, spring, refill, and stainless hardware. That's everything. So we'll use this one here. So we'll put this screw in the back here. Building the pens is my favorite step. So everything is done. It's all been test fitted. No, I know everything works. This is this is the part I enjoy the most. It's actually the spring. This is a stock spring, actually out of the um, Mark II, not the Mark II, uh, Pilot G2 uh, pen. This one, uh, when you buy the minis, the minis actually only come as the whole pen. You can't just buy the refills. You have to buy the whole pen. Uh, they're very inexpensive anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of wasteful, but. Uh, that's the way the pilot makes it go. So uh, the spring comes with it. I have my own stainless springs um, that I put in all my other pens, but they're just, they're a little bit too aggressive for this this design. I find them, um, I don't know, they, they just make the bolt pin a little bit too, um, I don't know, too forceful. Too, I, I have one on mine, and I like it, but it's just a, I don't know, it's a bit much. So I decided to go with these ones. That just choice preference nothing more so let's start this way so we'll thread this on look at that blue though man it looks good doesn't even show up as good on camera as it does in real but pretty nice drop the whole pen in uh, I always forget which way this all goes. Yeah, this one first. Another thing I did with uh, all the bodies now, the old bodies I used a tube, which didn't have an exact size internal diameter, um, which was okay. I just couldn't get the wall thickness that I wanted. Uh, actually, the, the whole uh, production batch of tube I ordered uh, was the wrong wall thickness. So it made me uh, think really quickly on my feet. So what I did is I purchased this uh, solid, and then I drilled it out, and I reamed it. So it's exactly... 0.25 on the inside, uh, which means that this refill uh, fits perfectly. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of clearance to allow for any kind of changes, but uh, it lets me size these bolt pins so that they slip in with just a little bit of wiggle room and keeps everything nice and tight. And it turns uh it's way nicer. My pen was made from tube, has a lot larger internal um, wiggle space, <laughs> and uh, these ones they. They feel much better. Just with that reamed internal bore, whew, way better. Way more work, but much nicer result. And then I just take the, I take the little tool, I put it right in the screw in the back and that lets me tweak it. And the reason the, reason the flat is on there uh, is A, I might eventually put some engravings on that flat, but it also lets you push this pin in and uh, it butts up with that flat and it helps you align the position for uh getting this little thumb stud in correctly. So I've already put this in once, so I'm just gonna line up the little area that already made a mark or where the set screw already 
met up with it, just so there's only one mark on it. And you just, just slightly tighten them. You don't have to go crazy because it's already nice, nice tight fit. Then I just check the cycle, make sure everything is nice and happy. I am so happy with those. I actually went around on these ones as well. Uh, you can barely see on this camera. And I ground the inside of the slot there where the bolt pin rides, uh, just with a very, very small grinding wheel. I didn't exactly like the finish that came off the mill. Um, so anyways, I just, I polished it a bit and uh, I don't know if I'll always do that, but for these ones, that, uh, <laughs> That turns out so nice. Very happy with that. Let me screw the cap in. And this part's uh, relatively tight. I machined these two diamonds, actually easier on this camera. Uh, those two diamond pieces are very, very, very tight fit. Um, and then I tumbled it. <laughs> and when I tumbled it, this little edge uh, on either side of this little pocket, this top edge, this edge, and this edge, and this edge, were rolled in a little bit from the, the tumbling process, because I, I aggressively tumbled these ones to get that nice, nice matte finish on them, uh, which also meant that this was a no fit. Like, it, it wouldn't even register like this to start being pressed in. Uh, so once again, on these, I actually had to ground, or had to ground, had to grind each one of these. You can see, you might be able to see, well, you can definitely see in the anodize, uh, if I get the angles right. Too many cameras so you can see in here there's a little bit of shininess on the inside because the surface is different because it was matted and then basically I took it and I ground those edges nice and smooth putting it back in my mill and remilling it probably would have been a, a better way to go about it but I was uh, I was terrified that uh, I wouldn't hit the index perfectly and then I would overbore it and then these would fit sloppishly and then this would be a throwaway and I already threw away a few of these, uh, so I don't want to throw it away anymore. So I ground it. Now that I know that, I'll be changing my processes a little bit, but so this is a tight fit. These ones just, I get it lined up and then basically just give it a squish. There, and it should stay in without, a, without any kind of hardware. And then once that's in place, this one's a 005, if you want to know. Actually, that's that's a tool that's going to ship with, so I'll just make sure it fits. Yeah, but I don't want to use it for assembly. And then I just tighten these ones, same thing like the other one, just tight. It just holds a clip in place. It's not actually holding it down. It just holds it into that pocket. The pocket is what registers everything. This one, I actually didn't press in well enough. Oop, there we go. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Man, that's a nice one. This blue turned out crazy. It's so nice, even compared to mine. Like the tumbled finish is so much better. Here's mine. This is the new tumbled finish. I just changed my uh, changed the way the tumbler was working. This is vibratory tumbled. This is uh, essentially uh, rotary tumbled. Like just absolute anarchy, and that seems to work way better. Just produced a wonderful surface. Glass smooth, but just nice and matte. This one you can still see some of the pre-finishing striations in it, which I I kind of like. Um, but this one. This one's just a true tumbled matte finish. I love that. I love that. And then all the polarities have obviously been checked because I want every pen to have the same polarity. When I build my stand, I can actually have the magnets and everything will work out. Wouldn't really matter, you just have to flip the magnet around, but I like to keep things consistent. I also, on this pen compared to this pen, um, this pocket clip you can see is only about 10 thou away from the body and this one's a little bit further. Uh, I just increased it a bit more uh, to make 
sliding into a pair of jeans easier. This one slid in perfectly, but on some of my really thick pairs of pants, maybe you can see better on these cameras. Um, I just increase it just a snatch and it slides in a lot better. I also tweaked some of the, ugh, tweaked some of the geometry slightly on the ramps just to get it to fit better. And the location of the pocket or the pin in comparison to the bolt, you can see has changed slightly as well. Once again, just to make it sit more comfortably in your pocket. Forever little improvements. Anyways, that one's awesome. That goes in there. That one goes with, ready for box up. So that's it. Nothing too complicated of a design. Um, I'm going to keep this one pretty short because I'm just going to use it as reference for this pen. But there's lots of cool changes in the shop and... Uh, I've had this last week off from my day job. I still have a few more months at my day job, um, but this week I basically took a bunch of vacation time, so I've had a ton of time just to work on shop stuff and finishing these pens and packaging and stuff uh, and shooting video. So we'll roll that in, hopefully in the next few days here into a new video, uh, which will cover more of the nitty gritty details about all this stuff. Uh, one thing I will talk about is uh, care and feeding of this little pen. So uh, the first thing is the magnet on the end sometimes collects like a little bit of metal particles or whatnot from your pocket or just being around in day-to-day -day use. The easiest way to clean all that off is a uh, sticky tack. I put sticky tack on the back and pull it all off. Uh, the titanium parts, if yours are anodized, this one's my pen so I can use my hands on it, not gloved hands. Um, easiest way to bring back the luster of the titanium is Windex. Uh, that's what I use to clean it before I send them out uh, and it, it's easy to get. It works amazingly well. Uh, the rest of the pen can be disassembled in soap and water should you ever want to clean it that much. The bolt slider pin is made from brass. It's self-lubricating. You should never need to lubricate it. Actually, over time, they wear in better because they kind of perfectly match the internal bore. Um, especially the reamed ones now, they're going to be, uh, they, they just, they feel much better already. Uh, and same with all like the slots and everything. It just Everything just works itself in better with time. Uh, if you wanted to put oil on it, you definitely can. I don't just because it makes the inside kind of gross and makes your refill gross when you change it. But uh, fill your boots, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, same, make sure it's off. Same goes <laughs> for all the threading. Uh, if you wanted to wax the threads or something, fill your boots. Uh, not something I would do. Um, but if it uh, if it strikes your fancy, go nuts. I almost said fill your boots again. I've said that lots. Uh, the bolt pin or the bolt slider that goes back and forth, and that's where the titanium thumb stud goes into, is held in place with a little grub screw. Uh, in the past, I had Loctited some of these, some I didn't. The ones I've been carrying, I've basically, now this one doesn't have a spring, so it just fell on the floor, but um, I haven't found the need for any Loctite. Um, if I was gonna put anything, Loctite 222 is the best. Um, this is a 256 size fastener. Uh, with a little Torx head. If you put like red Loctite on there, it's you got a good chance of stripping it when you're trying to take it apart. Um, so yeah, I would I would suggest 222. It's a very low strength Loctite. Or even uh, like I've heard like sugar water, stuff like that also works. You just want to gum the threads up enough so that it doesn't vibrate loose. Once again, I don't do it on my carry pens. I haven't found it to be a requirement um, at all. On my old pens, they seem to loosen a little bit, but these ones, I think it's just titanium and brass. It bites better. I don't know, but uh, I don't see the need for it. But if you do, or if you're having issues with the bolt, even without the grub screw, the bolt pin is in there so tight, it's it's probably not gonna fall out, but it's an option. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Uh, if you want more details, I've actually put a blog section on my website, just where I can put more written articles. Sometimes written information is easier to go through than just a video, scrubbing through videos is kind of annoying. Uh, so I started doing some blog posts and I've just made that live now. Uh, and there'll also be a big post about this pen and all the material choices and design choices I've made on it. So if, uh, if that's something you enjoy doing, go nuts. I, I love reading articles and I know a few machinists that still post written articles and it's, it's kind of a relaxing way to do it. Plus I enjoy typing and taking pictures. So it just gives me another option to relax. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, thank you for supporting me by buying products or, or just, just commenting and, and uh, being a cool person is, is awesome. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.